So if you're new to fly tying, where to begin can be really, really overwhelming. I know, I've been there, he's been there, she's been there. You're not alone in that. So that's why I thought it'd be helpful to give you a guide on where to start. And we're gonna break it down to probably the top five nymph patterns that you should learn how to tie. Very versatile, they work kind of everywhere around the world. In case you missed it, I did do a dry fly uh, top five as well. I will be putting the link in the description below, below and probably putting up top here, wherever that is, I think it's there, or here, whatever. So first and foremost, I think the best, the best nymph ever created in my opinion. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, well, I don't know about that. Some will agree, some will not, whatever. My opinion, the pheasant tail nymph. Now, I don't know how good that is gonna show up on camera. Probably not. But again, I'll leave some links in the description below um, and above here so that if you wanna learn how to tie this step by step, you're gonna be able to do so. So, as a beginner, why this is easy? Three materials. You've got pheasant tail for your tail, pheasant tail for your abdomen slash body, you got some copper wire for your ribbing, pheasant tail for your wing case, pheasant tail for your legs, and then perhaps some peacock or dubbing for the thorax. That's it. You wanna tie these for any resident trout, so like rainbow trout, brown trout, brook trout. Um, I would definitely stick with sizes 14 to 16, nothing too crazy and blaring or very blingy um, in their face. But for steelhead, I'll tie some big fat ones. I'm talking size eight, size 10, and just big fat. Like it, 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 only, it always ends up being like almost like a big fat, like stonefly. Uh, and I think just easy, easy meals, easy pickings for these, for these bigger steelhead. I don't know why it's big and fat. I said that. I know some people are probably gonna be offended by that. Next on the list, and I know it's, I know I know it says top five, but it's it's one fly pattern and it's just a different variation of it and it's not even a very it's just a different color but next on my list when the pheasant tail doesn't work i will throw on a copper john right, wherever that is so the copper john tied by the infamous tired john bar absolute ridiculously effective pattern. A little bit more complicated simply, simply because you gotta wrap some some hen for the for the legs and stuff. Um, but generally the concept of tying this is kind of the same as the pheasant tail, sizes 14 to 16. And then when you get, when you want larger fish like steelhead or salmon, John Barr actually already created the, what they call the jumbo John. So it's not really, I wouldn't put that in the in a nymph category because they're, they're big and they're hairy and they're absolutely amazing. But this is the traditional copper, copper John, uh, meaning it has a copper wire for the body, but a very, very close second in my opinion, um, if not first, is gonna be the copper John, but it's chartreuse, color chartreuse for the wire, or, uh, for the wire that's for the body. I think what makes most patterns effective like the ones that are tried tested and just verified fish smashers are the you'll notice that they kind of incorporate the same stuff right it's always it's always one of two colors copper or chartreuse you got anything copper in your fly you're probably going to catch fish if you got anything chartreuse you're probably going to catch fish the other thing that's very common is peacock peacock curl. So peacock curl comes in a variety of flavors. You can get them strung, you can get them in a bag, you can get the full peacock eyes. Um, a ton of them. So, and same thing with your, with your pheasant tail for the going back to the previous fly now, sorry. They'll come in bunches, they'll come in bags, they'll come in individual, they'll come in threes, they'll come bleached, they'll come dyed. I mean, there's, there's a lot, a lot to it. So, 
what I recommend, and, and again, keep in mind this beginners, it's very overwhelming, right? The amount of materials that are available, where to start, do I have to tie them exactly the same? No, 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 no. I mean, it, it's work with what you have, but it's good to have a starting point. And so what I would recommend, and I kind of wish I knew of this or heard of it or thought of it, whatever, um, from the beginning is Ziploc bags, small Ziploc bags. Almost everybody has them. So when you learn how to tie, let's say the pheasant tail, you're going to grab some of those materials. You're going to stick them in a Ziploc bag. So you're going to have your pheasant tail in there. You're going to have your copper wire and you're going to have your peacock and maybe a hook. I'd also recommend putting in an example fly. So if you have one on hand, put that in there for as your point of reference. So now as you're starting to learn and starting to put all the pieces together, you can just pick up your little zip block bag. It's going to be labeled PTN or pheasant tail nymph or whatever, you, however you want to name it. You're going to pick up your bag and you have everything there. So it's less time figuring out what materials do I need? What is, what's the recipe again? You got to look up the recipe and you got to learn all over again. That can be very, very frustrating and intimidating. So if you put all the materials in a little Ziploc bag, label it, eventually, after about a dozen, I promise you, you'll know how to tie a pheasant tail like riding a bike. Next on the list is an equally effective fly. See, this is why I don't like ranking them because <laughs> it's like, these are my five go-tos. I'll try one, if that doesn't work, I'll put on another one. If that doesn't work, I'll put on another one, but I'm not gonna rank them. But for good reason, the hare's ear nymph. Just an absolute killer pattern. Um, you'll often hear to it referred to as the gu a guide's choice fly. And just for reference, I think when, when they say guide's choice, you gotta remember that guides are, are they're busy, busy people. They got, a, they got a big task at hand, right? Like they gotta, they gotta book you in. They gotta keep you happy. They gotta entertain you. They gotta put you on the fish. They gotta row a boat. They maybe even have to feed you. Um, so utilizing less intricate flies or the flies that take a little bit longer to tie are just not ideal for them. But at the end of the day, this hair's here, as simple or as quick as it is to tie, will catch you a whole lot of fish, right? And that's why guides use them because they entrust in them to give you the best opportunity possible to catch something. Um, so that's that's what, in my interpretation of what a guide's hair fly pattern is, but the hair's ear, phenomenal. It just, it represents a wide variety or array of different insects within any sort of watershed. So. Absolute stunner. Again, I'll leave descriptions below and above if you want to watch how to, how to learn how to tie these step by step. And then another favorite for me, my favorite for, for brook trout. If I know I'm targeting brook trout, this is probably the first nib I'm putting on tied by another world renowned angler, Lance Egan. And this is Egan's Rainbow Warrior. I mean, that is not showing up at all. Can't even get that thing to focus. But very, very fast to tie, very simple. It's got some bling to it and just enough bugginess, I think, that makes it just crazy, crazy effective. Last but definitely not least, it's gonna be the Prince Nymph. Um, again, just a super, super buggy pattern. And you'll notice that they, it has the same materials that I, we keep referencing, and that's gonna be peacock, right? Peacock, you can use for thorax, for the body. Um, I kind of, I almost use it in every pattern. Whenever I have a chance to use peacock, I use peacock. So get yourself some peacock, some peacock curls, 100%. Peacock dubbing, ice peacock, you name it, just get some peacock. Yeah, outstanding pattern. The horns or the wings, however you want to reference them, they can be a little trickier to tie. But again, I have some cool tips and tricks in some other videos. 
be sure to check those out. Let me just sum this up nicely for you. Pheasant tail, the Copper John, like the Copper Copper John. You can do a Chartreuse Copper John, definitely recommend that one. You're gonna do the Hare's Ear, the Rainbow Warrior, and the Prince Nymph. I know it's six, but there's two Copper Johns in there. So before I conclude the video, I do wanna thank everybody who participated in my last video for the top five dry fly patterns. I did promise somebody a free copy of my ebook, uh, which talks a lot about taking pride in your work, giving you know 110% of your ability to tie a fly, because then every fly in your box becomes a confidence fly. When you fish with confidence, you'll land more fish. I also go into a little bit about uh, more detail about my setup, my lighting, um, and all sort of all the things regarding fly tying photography, tips and tricks that I've learned along the way hoping that it can be a little helpful for for those of you that are interested in, and want to take your fly tying game to the next level so um the winner of that is patricia Petza. i hope i pronounced that properly if i didn't i greatly apologize um but uh, patricia i'll reach out we'll coordinate um we'll get your email address and i'll send you a copy of that free ebook uh, i'll put a link to that in the description down below and everything else you kind of see as well like i got some merch i got my hat all those types of things all the things down below check it out once again thanks again for watching i appreciate all of you stay tuned for the next one cheers